Hi, I'm Kat and I play Red. When we go to Essen, we usually get shopping lists from some of my friends in the US. The game we're going to look at today was on one of those shopping lists. You know who you are. Today we are looking at Cecil and Paper. Now, this had kind of bypassed us on the Essen lists. There's so much on there, it's impossible to find everything. Friend asked me to pick up a copy. We saw it. We saw the cute origami. Rob's got a bit of a thing about origami. So we grabbed a copy for ourselves. Um, it's now available to play on Board Game Arena, and I think it's recently had a US release. So let's have a look at it. At the start of the game, we're going to shuffle the deck and put two cards out. These are going to be our two discard piles for the game. Now, in your turn, you can either pick the top card from either of these discard piles, or you can draw two cards from the deck, choose one to keep, and then choose a discard pile for the other card you've just picked up. And that's your turn. It really is that simple. Now, a big part of what you're trying to do is gain pairs of matching cards. So we can see here, this card is a sailboat, and this card here is a crab. And all of these cards have got different actions. So let's say it's my turn again. I'm actually gonna take this sailboat from the discard pile and I have a pair so I can play that matching pair. Now the colours don't matter for placing pairs it just happens that these are both light blue and a pair of boats means I get an extra turn so I'm going to have my extra turn I'm going to draw two cards and discard one and keep the other one now, if I have a pair, I can choose to keep them in my hand or I can choose to play them. So let's have a look at the different cards and the effects they have. So we've seen the sailboats here, which give you an extra turn. The crabs here, seeing as we've got a pair here, if you place a pair of crabs, you can go through any discard pile, choose the card you want and pull it out. So that's them. Um, we then have, now these are a pair but they're not a pair, they're slightly different. We have the shark and the swimmer which make up a pair. Now these allow you to steal a card from an opponent's hand. Fish, now a pair of fish means you can just draw the card off the top of the deck so it might be good might be rubbish but you are getting oops there's a pair of fish you are getting an extra card um so there we have the four pairs available we have crabs boats swimmer sharks and fishes now there's quite a few you can see there's quite a few other cards in the deck we also have cards like these, like the shells and the octopus and the penguin and the sailors. Now, all of these, you're not ever going to place these on the table. These will stay in your hand for the duration of the round. And this tells you how many points you get. So, the sailors being the easiest, if you have one, gets you zero points. However, if you have two of them, you get five points. Penguins, one, three, five, depending on how many you have. The octopus, zero, three, six, nine, twelve. And the shells, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. So these will only trigger when the round ends. Let's get rid of those. Then we have some cards that will give you extra points for specific things. So the lighthouse here will give you one point for a boat. 
uh, put for each boat you have in fact. The penguin colony, which will give you two points per penguin. The I think he's the captain, gives you three points for each sailor. And the shoulder fish, which will give you one point for every fish you have at the end of the game. Now, these will apply to cards in your hand or in your tableau. So, sea salt and paper is played over a number of rounds. The total number of points to game end depends on the number of players. So, this plays at two, three or four players. If you're playing two players, you're going to play to 40 points. Three players, you're going to play to 35. And four players, you're going to play to 30 points. One extra card and this is the last one I promise, is the mermaids. Now, if you have all four of these in your hand, you win the game. Simple, done. Can't be beaten. However, let's say, ooh, take these away. Let's say this was my hand. The mermaid will score me what is called a colour bonus. So this mermaid is worth a number of points equal to the colour I have most of. So in this case, my mermaid would be worth three points. Um, if I had that, my mermaid would be worth two points for the two blacks and so on. And obviously, duplicate mermaids will score you duplicate times. So if I had two mermaids, I would have Two points for the black from this one, two points from the green for that one. And the mermaids themselves are also a colour, they're white. So you could say I have two points for white and two points for black, however you work it. Now you're going to carry on playing, drawing a card, placing pairs if you want to, until someone hits seven points. And as soon as you hit seven points, you have three options. So I'm going to take the fish. Rob, what would you like from the deck or the captain? I would like from the deck, please. Okay. Which one would you like? This one or this one? That one. This one. And then that card will go into the empty discard pile. Now, the mermaids are the reason that you might hold on to specific colours. Oh, he's going to take the shell. I'm going to draw some more. I'm going to take that, put the swimmer down. And I am now going to play a pair of fish, which means I can draw a card from the top of the deck. So, as soon as a player gets to seven points, they can carry on playing. Alternatively, they can say stop and everyone will immediately score the points that they have. So let's just give me a quick hand of seven. That'll be one, two, three, four. So by the miracle of magic, I have seven points in my hand. Now, I could choose to play, so I could play my pair of boats, which would let me play a game, which I'm going to do. And I can then say stop, at which point all players must reveal their hands and score appropriately. So in this case, I'd have one, two, three points from my pairs, each pair is worth a point. Three points from my penguin, so that would be six. My mermaid would give me seven, eight, nine points. So that would be all I'd get. I'd get nine points. Rob would get the total of however many points he had. We'd write that on a bit of paper, shuffle the deck and play a game. Alternatively, as I'm at seven points, I can reveal what I've got and say last chance. So I have nine points and players are looking to beat that score. If I win the bet, 
i.e. my score is higher or equal to everyone else, I will score not only the nine points, but I will also score a colour bonus. That would be, in this case, one, two, three points. So I'd score a total of 12 for the round. My opponents would get to score their colour bonuses. So oof, let's give Rob some extra cards. If that was Rob's hand, he would score three for the blue. However, if I had lost the bet, I would score my colour bonus of three and my opponents would score their points with no colour bonus. So in this case, we'd write down, I have 12 points, Rob has three, we'd move on to the next round and play would continue until one of us hit 40 points. So we'd put all the cards back together, shuffle the deck back up. Because I called the end, um, Rob would be the start player. So we put two cards out for him, place the deck, and we begin again. Sea Salt and Paper is charming. Um, it's one of those games that you kind of read and see about and you kind of dismiss it as another little card game. But actually, it's strangely addictive. Um, I've, we've been playing this version a lot and we've actually been playing quite a lot on Board Game Arena. It's super small. Um, Obviously, that is the entire box. So it's a great one for sticking in your glove box, your handbag, boot of your car, whatever, um, to take with you. It's also quite cheap. Um, I know it's on Amazon in the UK for about £16, um, 20 US dollars. Um, it's got a little card here that actually tells you... Um, not only has it got symbols for the colours if you're playing with colourblind people, but it also tells you the frequency of all of the colours. Uh, if you're trying to get those colour bonus points, that's super handy. On the cards as well, in tiny little writing at the bottom, it tells you how many of each of type of card are in the deck. Um, the sailors, for example, there's only two of, so you don't necessarily want to hang on to them unless you know you can grab another one at some point. Um, there is also a little cheat sheet card that explains the scoring. I do wish there was a similar little card um, for the bonus effects, but you do get used to them and there's only four. Um, so you do remember them after a few plays, but I know the first few games I had, I was quite frustrated that they had these amazing little guides, but not one for the actual card effects. Um, so check it out now. Um, I think that say it's just got a US release. It's definitely available in the UK. Um, I bought some copies for friends in America from Amazon. Um, so it's around. Really neat little game. Um, it's always nice when you have one of these that's a pleasant surprise. Plays two to four people. Plays, I mean, this says 30 minutes and I don't think it takes 30 minutes. I'd say 15, 20 minutes maybe. Have a look, see salt and paper. Cute origami art as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, all the usual gubbins. See you next time. Bye.